My name is Sydney Songer. I'm a holistic wellness practitioner and the gemstone education specialist with Gemisphere. And today I wanna to talk to you about Roselle. Now Roselle is essentially spherical rose quartz and its entire mission is about purifying the emotions. So some indications that you may wanna work with Roselle would be if you're having trouble expressing your emotions, if you're finding that emotionally you're feeling flat, closed off or shut down, or if you have a physical ailment or condition where you feel like there may be an underlying emotional component that you're wanting to uncover and try and release so that you can begin to move forward in your healing and recovery. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the ways in which Roselle works within the system and the emotional body to help uh, release these suppressed emotions. And also I'm gonna discuss a bit about uh, other emotional gemstones that you can use in conjunction with it that pair really well in kind of the order to work with those, as well as some other indicators around quality um, and clarity that affect the therapeutic nature of it and other things to look for uh, when working with this as a therapeutic tool. Roselle works by stimulating a very deep emotional purification process that essentially helps to release emotional limitations that might be hindering personal growth or access to feeling more positive emotions like happiness, love, and joy. When we have certain experiences, things that may be perceived by our system as traumatic or painful, uh, we can essentially go through a process where we lock certain emotions away. We sort of compartmentalize, we repress or suppress what we're feeling. Uh, but this can also be the result of social or societal conditioning where we're told uh, that we should or should not feel or express certain things. And so over time, this can begin to have an impact not only on our mind, uh, but on our physical body. Um, having these types of experiences and receiving this type of information that's trying to limit our emotional capacity essentially um, has the ability to shut down the heart chakra, which uh, can have a huge impact not only on our mind and our emotions, but on our physical body as well. Um, our heart chakra, most people are trying to have an open heart chakra, but it's important to note that the chakra of the heart, it has the ability to open and to close and for good reason, it does both. When we are experiencing something that is positive and healthy for us, we should be able to have it open up and receive and to express uh, the full spectrum of the experience and so that we can live it and feel it fully. Uh, when there is a more detrimental experience that's happening or energy that's not good for us coming towards us, it should be able to essentially contract and kind of guard itself uh, to protect us and to protect our energy. So it's important for it to have that motion going both ways, which is something that isn't often talked about, but is really ideal. It should not be stuck open and it should not be stuck closed. Now, uh, Roselle works to very gently stimulate the heart chakra to create sort of a uh, wave-like motion through it that helps to bring up these suppressed uh, emotions and um, memories in some cases, and to help the heart chakra to uh, release them and express them. And once that process is complete, then it's helping it to be open to receiving as well when that's appropriate and when it's healthy. Roselle works in two phases. In the first phase, it stirs repressed emotions and brings them to the surface so that they can come into your awareness and so that you can understand them better. In the second phase, it's helping to resolve the emotions. It's helping to express them, release them, and allow you to be able to move on from them, especially if they're having an impact on your mind, your emotions, or your physical body. It's important to note that Roselle is not going to heal your emotions. Its job is not to essentially uh, resolve whatever has happened and give you understanding. It's simply trying to bring up these repressed memories and emotions so that they can be dealt with. And because of this, Roselle works really well uh, alongside things like therapy or counseling or any other form of emotional therapy that you might be undergoing. Um, it's important to also have intention when you're working with Roselle, to be clear about what it is that you're trying to work on uh, to help kind of direct the energy uh, and focus it so that you can be as productive with it as possible. Now, for some people, they might not feel like they have a lot 
that they have um, packed away. There's not a lot that they think is uncovered or that they're going to discover that they don't remember or they haven't acknowledged. Uh, but in this case, Roselle can be very stimulating in the sense that it's still going to help kind of flex the heart chakra and help it to um, open and close in a way that is healthy and optimal. Um, but also it can help to kind of stimulate a much deeper sense of self-awareness and self-understanding, uh, which can still be beneficial even if repressed emotions and feelings uh, aren't part of the equation. So there are many gemstones that help support the emotional body in various ways, but I want to talk about a few that are kind of uh, my go-tos to work with uh, when I'm working with Roselle with a client. Uh, Roselle is something that for some people can be very comforting. It can be calming, it can be soothing, and for some other people sometimes it can be a bit too strong right out of the gate, especially if they have a lot of repressed trauma or uh, repressed memories that they're unaware of from uh, potentially abusive situations or other uh, forms of un unhealthy situations, uh, perhaps from childhood, especially if they have carried that with them for a long period of time. Uh, in that case, sometimes they aren't quite ready uh, to have those things revealed to them. Perhaps they're not emotionally um, available or stable enough um, to process those quite yet. And so in that case, what I like to do is start someone with something like Mother of Pearl, which can be very soothing uh, to the, the, not only the nervous system, but to the emotional body. It's very um, kind of cradling and comforting. Uh, but the next thing that I would tend to work with somebody with would be Rhodonite, which I will be discussing more in depth in my next video. But rhodonite is all about emotional um, kind of foundation, essentially stabilizing the emotional body and helping it to be a bit more solid so that when you start working with something like Roselle, if it does start to bring up old emotional patterns or repressed memories, you're going to be in a state emotionally where you're more receptive to those things and you're not quite so caught off guard. Uh, working with something like Rhodonite before Roselle has been one of the most um, functional forms of emotional therapy that I've used with clients where I've seen the most results. Uh, and it tends to work in a way that creates more sustainable results, which I really, really appreciate. Uh, another thing that you can use would be something like Ruby. So if you're really having a hard time um, kind of moving through those emotions and you're needing to kind of amplify um, the effects of Roselle, Ruby can come in and kind of increase your level of emotional confidence so that you understand the amount of love that is within and around you uh, to give you that confidence to move forward and to allow the heart chakra to open, allow those repressed memories to come to the surface and then give you also the confidence um, to deal with them and express them and move them so that you can move forward yourself. Roselle is also a wonderful precursor for working with something like rhodochrosite. Rhodochrosite is certainly one of our more um, intense uh, emotional gemstones, and it's definitely one that I like to build people up to, uh, to get the most optimal results from. And so Roselle essentially kind of paves the way for rhodochrosite's work, which I'll also talk about in another video. But rhodochrosite essentially goes in and helps to rewrite emotional patterns, things that have become habitual in the system and are impacting our behavior, uh, the way that we perceive ourselves in the world. Um, so uh, once we have this greater sense of self-awareness and understanding from working with Roselle, it becomes easier for the frequency of rhodochrosite to come in and actually sort of see the entire emotional picture and see the parts that aren't functioning at an optimal level or may not be ideal and need to be shifted. Uh, so then our system is more open um, to not only presenting those issues, but being open to allowing change to occur. Since when you're working with Roselle, you're trying to soothe and uh, basically unearth hidden emotions and memories within the system, it's very important that we're careful about the quality of the gemstone that we're working with so that the vibration and the frequency that we're receiving from it is ideal and in sync with what we're trying to accomplish. So here are some points to keep in mind um, when you're working with Roselle and looking for therapeutic quality. 
the first to note is that we don't want to wear gold with Roselle. They have very disharmonious energies and they tend to clash and have more of an adverse um, effect in the emotional body. Now, gold in itself is not necessarily bad. We actually use it for a lot of our clasps and even gold beads in some of our combinations. And in those particular combinations, it works well. It's harmonious. It has a flow to it that is um, healthy for our system. But with Roselle, it's not ideal because the frequency of gold can tend to, when interacting with Roselle, uh, it can tend to shut down the heart chakra and lock in certain states of consciousness or certain states of emotional um, processing, which is kind of counterproductive to what we're trying to do with Roselle. And so it would be ideal to not wear gold necklaces with it or um, to try and add a gold clasp if you wanted to some people like to restring their necklaces to be a different length. If you do that, gold would not be ideal. Now the actual quality of Roselle, when we're looking at it, it should be translucent, but not cloudy. That means it's more of like a light pink mist, as opposed to being totally hazy or completely optical uh, in nature. Optical Roselle is not necessarily bad, but it's not ideal to wear as a necklace or to wear as a necklace long term. It can be a bit too harsh and abrupt, which for some people's system is just way too much. Uh, so we can use Optico Roselle as a tool if we're being very mindful and intentional about how we're using it. This can very quickly stimulate um, a reaction or have an effect in the physical body or even the emotional body as well. Uh, but we want to do that. It, it's more ideal to do that under the care of a professional who knows what they're doing with it, but also to make sure that we're doing it for very short periods of time. So the result that you want to be wearing is going to be more translucent. And here's the other part that's really important. It should not be dyed. There is a lot of Roselle or, or what would would be called rose quartz in the world where it's highly dyed to make it look like a higher quality gemstone. So it's going to be a very vibrant pink color, which can be very pretty, but it can actually be quite detrimental to the system. And the reason for this is because our, our energy can detect that something is off and the vibration, the way that it's altered in the roselle when it's dyed, it actually causes the heart chakra again to try and close down and for our energy to close down to try and protect us from these more uh, harmful vibrations that are coming off of it. So it's very important that it's not dyed if you're trying to use it therapeutically. And I would even venture to say not to wear dyed Roselle or Rose Quartz just in general uh, if you're trying to be mindful of your energy in the process. Uh, Roselle and Rose Quartz will always be a very gentle pink color. It is very rare to find a high quality in that way. Um, but if you find something that is super pink, um, there's a really good chance that it's dyed. So just make sure that wherever you're getting your Roselle from that you understand um, whether or not it's dyed and you pay attention to these other quality features. So I've gone through a lot of the different ways that Roselle can help to release suppressed emotions and help open up the heart chakra uh, and allow you to move past emotional limitations, express your emotions more openly, and feel the full spectrum of emotional experience that life has to offer. If you have additional questions or you would like to learn more about how you might be able to work uh, with Roselle and how it might benefit you, you can call uh, and speak with us at Gemisphere or you're always welcome to schedule a private consultation with me and we can dive into your individual situation a bit more in depth. Uh, if you would like, you can like and subscribe this video and I will be doing additional uh, educational videos as we move forward. If you subscribe, you will be alerted as soon as those become available. Uh, next week, I'll be covering Rhodonite, which is one of my absolute all-time favorites, so do please stay tuned for that. And as always, thank you so much for watching and please be well.